Hey guys, it's Danny. Alrighty, today we're gonna play around with African Violets. Now I know it's Sunday and according to your comments you would like me to make the orchid discussion videos again Sundays. Uh, we're gonna skip the Sunday because I really need to do this. I mean, look at this. I absolutely need to divide all of these babies from the African Violets. Now if you don't remember, last year I received from my mom a few leaves from her beautiful African Violets. I propagated them, I potted them and of course they created a lot of offshoots. Some of them even bloomed this summer, uh, but I never got around to do it because of all the problems with the orchids. Well, not really problems, but I needed to work on the orchids a little bit more, plus the apartment, plus everything. I just left these guys on a secondary plane, but now I really want to take care of them. So I will be dividing the African violets, not all of them in the video, but I will have to do all of them, which are a lot of them. And I had an idea. I'm going to be using styrofoam cups. Now styrofoam is actually the brand but because most of my viewers are actually from the USA and I know the brand is popular there, I just named this video with that name and in Europe or at least where I grew up we call it polystyrene. Anyway, call it as you want. What's the deal with this cup or actually this material? Well, it provides insulation and in the orchid hobby styrofoam or polystyrene is used in various ways. One of them is for insulation in cold weather transports and my very first transport or actually order from Schwerter came in this polystyrene box. So I thought, well, if this thing provides insulation and African violets don't really enjoy hot weather or very cold weather for that matter, I think it's gonna do just great. Now I seriously doubt this is an original idea, I'm pretty sure somebody has done it before me, so no, I'm not claiming dibs on the idea, but I just thought it might work. So what are these cups? Of course they're coffee cups and I was looking for those that don't have the cap, but I couldn't find them. These are coffee cups that you can find at supermarkets, hypermarkets, wherever pretty much they sell one-time use cups. And all we need to do to use them is provide drainage holes. And this is such a simple technique. Get yourself a bamboo skewer that has a pointy tip and then just punch some holes. And that's it. You don't need to heat up nails or soldering irons. That's all there is to it. Ta-da, we can use it. Okay, so first of all, we need to unpot and separate all of the babies of the African violet. There were originally two leaves here. And P.S. If you missed the video with the propagation that I did, I'll link it down below. But I have to tell you, I prefer water propagation in my experience, or should I say in my mom's experience of 20 years. We had less losses with the water propagation rather than soil propagation. So that's just a little disclaimer. Propagate however you like. We prefer water. So let's see. Ooh. Alrighty, this does not look bad. Okay, so now comes the impossible job of actually determining how many rosettes I have here. So I'm just gonna have to start somewhere. Okay, I think I separated multiple ones. It's okay. Well, it naturally separated in two because most probably one clump comes from one leaf and the other from the other leaf. And now let's actually try to separate the rosettes. I think I will manage to break a few leaves, but that's okay. Okay, so this is one. I'm actually gonna pick the most vigorous ones. This, as you can see, it's just, it doesn't really look that great. I don't think there's any point in trying to save that one. And I have to say this is a little harder than I imagined because the stems are just so brittle. So I thought I would save 10 babies from a plant, but I don't think I'll be able to do so because not all of the babies are actually looking good. And to get to the good rosette, I kind of need to damage a few of the not so good looking rosettes. So it's okay, I don't need 10 African violets of the same kind, I just need a few good ones. So I'm gonna go ahead and separate rosettes and then I'm just gonna choose the best looking ones and we will come back when it's time to pot them. And even so, I apparently got six divisions that I can pot separately from that entire mess. So even if I did manage to break a few, I have six babies to work with. And I will keep these two, I think. Maybe that one as well. I don't know. I'll pot them all and then I'm just gonna give them away to family and friends because African violets are just so pretty and pretty much everybody can grow them in a house. They don't require a lot of light. They're just gonna be pretty and I know somebody will be very happy to receive one. So yeah, I will just keep for myself two of them. 
I'll pot them in the polystyrene pots and the other one I have some one-time use cups. I'm just gonna pot them there and they will be kept until they get more vigorous, until they establish and then I'm just gonna give them away. Okay, so I'm gonna clean out my little table and return when it's time to pot. Alrighty, so the mix that I'm gonna be using to pot them is not an African violet mix. I don't have anything of the sorts available locally. I would have to order too much money really. So what I do is just get a good quality peat moss soil. I will show you the brand. This is the only, only one that I actually prefer. Never mind Compo, never mind other brands really this is actually so good it is well draining it is fluffy it doesn't get to that dry state that water cannot soak and then it just pulls on top it does not do any of that and after one year and a half of use with my vanilla with my other plants it is as good as new really so that's the best soil that I have here locally and I combine it with a lot of perlite I never measure stuff I don't know it's just visual so this is the best combination that I found so far for my non orchid plants so let's start with this one she has quite a nice root system could be better it will be better so I'm just gonna sit the African violet in the pot and then put soil around it oh I have to be very gentle with these leaves they're just so brittle they look like succulents really and here we go one down one more to go And the second one is ready as well, but look at it, it's quite dirty. So why don't we fix that? Now the best way to clean dirt from the African violet leaves is with a brush. Water can cause some rotting sometimes, it's not a great idea to put water on the leaves and in the crown. So get a dry brush that you don't like, or just purchase one for this purpose, and then just dust the leaves off. And actually, I showed you this a long time ago, when your African violet gets really dusty, get yourself one of these things and just remove the dust and the leaves will get so incredibly shiny and glossy. Well, they will appear glossy. They're not glossy because they have little hairs, but they will appear so much nicer. So a brush is really great to have around them for maintenance. So that is one done. Let's take a look at this one. So the violets are looking nice, but what about the pot? The pot is dirtier than the plant. No worries, let's just get a paper tissue and soak it with water. And here we go, we can now simply remove the dirt with the paper tissue. Now I usually prefer to water African violets from below from the tray as much as possible, but when I repot them into fresh soil, I do water them from the top just to get everything wet. Peat moss can take a while until it gets super wet and if I just pour water in the trays there is no guarantee it will be sucked up to the top. It kind of needs to get primed first. However, I do want to avoid getting water on the leaves and especially in the crown. So for this reason, I like to use a wash bottle. This can be found on Amazon, eBay, in chemistry supplies actually, and recently in gardening as well since mini gardens or terrariums are starting to become popular. At the same time, I like to place my African violet pots or cups into a raised container or a dish. And this is because I can place more water in there and maintain my African violets wetter in summertime when water evaporates faster. So now I'm just going to water my African violets at the top. But as you can see, the water just goes down. There's no pooling, nothing of the sorts. And this is because... As I was saying, this medium is actually pretty, pretty good. Now there might be other medias out there that are better, it's up to you. It has to fit your preference, but as far as I'm concerned with the African violets and all of the other plants, nothing really beats this medium. Look at that, look how much water I pour and it just doesn't pull. I've encountered some soils out there that are simply impossible to work with. So my main focus is to get all of the soil super wet. I will try to make sure water comes down from the bottom and I'll just leave that water there. But I do wanna get all this medium super wet at first. As much as this medium is good, it's still peat moss. It can still have dry pockets that will never re-wet. And that is about it for the African violets. They are now potted, separated, 
and hopefully they will do a lot better because up until now they kind of remained to the same size let's say they were just too crowded so yeah i'm gonna spend this sunday or as much of this sunday as possible just repotting and separating african violets so i hope you've enjoyed this video let me know if you've ever tried the polystyrene uh, cups how did it work out for you so i will keep you up to date with the evolution of my african violets we'll see hopefully they do well and yeah who knows maybe i'm gonna get some other varieties as well if uh, i'm successful with them I'm pretty sure I will never come close to my mom's uh, results, but yeah, there we go. At least I have the orchids, right? So thank you so much for watching, hope you've enjoyed this and you know the drill. If you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe to my channel for regular orchids and plants videos. I post five times a week, I take a break on Wednesday and Thursday, but if you don't want to be bothered with that, just turn on notifications and YouTube will let you know whenever I upload a new video. And with that said, I'll see you all next time, bye! So I'm kind of redecorating, redoing the greenhouse. I'm not sure when I'm gonna film it and show it to you because um, it's still in early stages and I'm not happy and everything still looks like a mess. But there you go, this is what I am doing downstairs. I've been looking for a lot of time for some benches or a system to display some orchids higher than the others, give this uh, cascady type of looking feeling. And I never found anything, but I was looking in the gardening section. Oh no, time to go to Ikea. And of course I found something at Ikea. Uh, but we'll see, I wanna do the same for the upper shelves as well. And yeah, exciting things, but it's just gonna take a while. They just didn't look good until now, but now they're looking a lot better.